we have a esteemed numismatic uh, individual in the personage of Van Chamberlain. Now, he did a program on heirs of Lincoln's sense at the Vallejo Museum, the symposium, a couple years ago, was it, Sam? Excellent program. And what surprised everybody in the audience, he passed around a, a, a cigar box with air Lincoln sense and a clipped sense, double sense. He said, everybody take one. Well, I took one, the Marine took one, and they were great. So I don't think he's going to have that tonight. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but uh, he's talking tonight on Indian scent airs. So, Zan, if you step forward, please. All right, Zan. Nickel scent errors. Okay. Yeah. What I mean by that is, if I said Indian sense and I include the flying eagle sense, and somebody always says, well, you didn't say flying eagle sense. You only said Indian sense. I said, well, I consider the flying eagles part of the Indian head sense. Set kind of, sort of, since it's usually in the book. Right? So if it's in the book, that's how I got to collect it. And that's how it works. Well, that's not how it is in the registry. The registry. The hex or register, I think. It's okay. So I started with Indian, that's, believe it or not, a copper nickel Indian head scent. That's a copper nickel flying eagle scent. Double struck. And I did all of this starting back in 1984 when I was able to acquire from Lens Air Auctions, which was a mail auction through Koneka. And there was no pictures back then, right? I mean, you know, there was no internet. There was no pictures. If there were any pictures, they were black and white. And the description for this coin said, double struck, 1863, high grade, small scratch. <laughs> well, if it's just a small scratch, I want that coin because that sounds fascinating to me. And this is what I won for $49.50, which in 1984, well, continues to be here in 2016, a lot of money. But, okay, there's, if, if you're talking about. Let me find this button. here. Well, I'm just trying to get the laser. There it is. If, if, if that's the small scratch, that's cool. Just ignore that part. And, well, I mean, that's more of a dig than a scratch. Right? So, you know, maybe, maybe that's the scratch. But anyway, I got it, and I was fascinated with it. So I said, geez, I wonder if any more of these exist. Small scratch. Small scratch, yeah. And, and maybe I could find one without a scratch. Who knows? So I went to a coin show where a guy had a complete set of Indian head scent errors um, by date. Fred, Fred Sihan is the way he pronounced it. He was from Illinois. And his first coin was an 1864 <coughs> off center with a indent. And that indent kind of sort of looks like it might have been a staple. Hard to say. Could have been just a piece of wire off of a wire brush, who knows. But that was his first coin. Now, if you say, if I have his first coin, what does that mean? <laughs> I have all of his coins. <laughs> he was kind enough after 20 years to say, I don't want these anymore. I think I'm done. And the only person I know that really loves him is you. And I said, great, fabulous. How much do you want? He goes, I want nothing. But. I said, wow, okay. But he said, I'd like to be remembered somehow. <coughs> so I said, well, what about the A&A? &A? So we contacted the A&A, &A and you now see that the local interest um, exhibit category is named after Fred. And if you go there, you'll see that two of the, of the coin, coin cases are sponsored by Fred. And when they remodeled the whole place, uh, he's on the wall of the guys that did it. So I gave him 25,000 bucks through the ANA, and he gave me his coin collection. So he was quite pleased, and that's how he is now. 
remember it. Since he was doing it by date, he said, Sam, you may want to do it by date as well. So that's my favorite, 1857. I had one that was 50% off center, uh, but no date. So I was at a coin show and I found Walter Breen. <laughs> and I was, I was old enough to be of no interest. So, why? Why? So I showed him the, my half off Indian headset and I said, this is an 1856, right? I mean, you, know, you can tell just by the diagnostics. He said, yes, by diagnostics, it's an 1857. I said, oh, thanks, Walter. All right, fine. So, anyhow, so that one's gone. But then uh, something that's called uncentered broad strike. Well, why is that not off center? It kind of looks off center. Well, the rules at the grading services are if no design is actually missing off of the coin, then it is in fact just broad struck. So the collar wasn't there, the coin expanded, but it wasn't so far out of the way that you're missing some of the design. But I still like it because it was a nice high grade. Now the double strikes, that has have been very difficult. This one is double struck in the collar. If you look, I'll get it there. Down here, you can see a second eight, and of course, more of the wing, oh, second yeah. tail. Yeah. So it shifted, what, about 10, 12 degrees? And the, the other side's small, it's probably in there, but you know, my eyes is no longer can say it. So then, one of the ones where the guy was so upset after he sold it to me, when he figured out what it was worth when it came back as a 65, I said, it's an error, who gives it? You, you know what about the grade? He said, but it's a 65, that's a $3,000 coin. I said, it's got a piece missing. <laughs> okay, I think I already paid too much. So, anyway. But that was very pretty as far as I'm concerned. Now this one, 1858, retained die grade. What does that mean? Well, in the aero world, there's something that they call a cut which I never really understood because I think of a cow chewing. But they said that when the die broke, you get that line because that piece was getting ready to fall away after the die itself broke. That piece at some point, unless the guy spotted the air, that piece would have fallen off and there would be no design. It would just be a blob like you've seen on probably other arrows. And that was all right, copper nickel cents, that's what we're talking about. I always thought that there were blanks, or I used to call them blank planchets. Boy, did I get a rash, you know what, at one of my Koneka meetings, where he stood up and said, well, you know, excuse me, a blank, type one blank, that's where it has not gone through the upset mill. So it has that sharp edge. Once it's gone through the upset mill, then the edges are upset. Well, if you went through that mill, you'd be upset too. But it, it, it raised it up, so it would just hold it there. And that's when it becomes a planchet. So if it's a blank or a planchet. Okay, cool, now I know. So, then, up first die cap. Now, when you're, yeah, I mean, it's actually like a cap from a soda bottle. Getting a bowl of pork flakes. That's right, yeah. At that size, that would be fun. That size, yeah. yeah. So the coin was being struck over and over again and started to expand and then came up over the obverse die. And the reverse just expanded out until the guy was able to get it off the die. And those are relatively not common. There are, however, three of 1859s, strangely enough. Now, 1859 double struck. I always like this one because it has the two dates. Anytime you get two dates, then you get a premium for that. And the fact that the second strike was so much as opposed to just a little blob up in the corner, that worked out quite well. So that coin didn't eject, it moved over, got hit again, 
and then got thrown away. 1859, again, we're still in the copper nickels. Off center, some of the designs missing. Well, I can't tell any difference between that and a uh, broad struck, but you know what? I guess it depends on the day of the week. So that's cool, but you notice it's struck on a type one clenchet. So what does that mean? It's got the sharp edge. It was did not go through the upset mill. You know, it kind of sort of looks like it did. They say it didn't, uh -huh. so it's on it. On the type one blank. Cool. How come it's not a type one blank instead of a Well, because they were still going over the nomenclature uh, <laughs> back then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like because I always thought that it if it went through the upset mill, then it was going to be type two clench it. And if it hadn't, it was a type one clench it. And then the you know, then the argument was, well, no, type <laughs> type one is a blank. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Whatever. Don't make this complicated. I'm just trying to have fun. All right. Brockage, reverse, and broad struck. So that was cool. There's no date on the coin, yet if we were able to figure out it's 1859 because of the design, right? That was the one-year type. So that was cool. So the collar was not in place. There was another coin that had been struck on top of it. And as it was being struck, it expanded, expanded, and the design from the coin on top was imprinted and then made larger and larger. Again, you'd think that in 1859 they, they weren't making so many that they could catch this stuff. But they were still making millions. Right? And who knows what was going on at lunch. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, 1860 to 64. Well, we don't know the date, but it's got the right shield for 1860 to 64. It's the exact same error, just in one of those other years, and this and the same thing. Okay, no date off center. Well, all right. What's the date? Eh, who knows? We know within the five-year span, so that's good. And it says with chain strike edge. So if you look down here, you see that there must have been another blank next to it, and. That coin got struck as well, also off the center. And that one probably would have had the date. So, oh well. Can't get them all. 1860 flip over double strike. Well, I like this one because here's the shield from the reverse. Here's part of the ring. Right? You see, you see the shield right there? Okay. And then. Uh, it's out of focus, but that's my lousy picture taken. 1860 is right there. Okay, 1860. okay yeah. So that was fun. 1861, all right, another. It was the planchet. Uh, as they're making the blanks, if the strip doesn't go all the way to a new area, then part of a planchet will show up as having been clipped. So that's when it gets clipped, and it still gets struck. And then it goes out, and then some guy buys it, and then another guy buys it, and then he sells it to me, and then I have a slap, and here it is. So that's how that works. I don't think that was the plan in 1861, but that's just the result. Now, like that 1859, another one, this one from 1862. I've seen an 1860, a 61, and a 63, which I passed up at a show. You know, we all have those woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. <laughs> so this was one where guy comes in wheeling his dad, and his dad's selling his air points. He's had for a long time. And he opens up his little coil thing, and he pulls out an 1863 Indian head cap with a double strike of the date, 1863, on the edge of the cap. And of course, I immediately start drooling. <laughs> so the gentleman says, $3,000. And I say, OK. And I start getting <laughs> out my wallet. And the prick son, excuse me, the uh, <laughs> gentleman's offspring says, $5,000, which was still was a good price. But I let my nose my face 
And I said, $5,000? Well, that's crap, you know, since he said three, five. I, uh, I don't know. I should have just said, yeah, okay, whatever. But, uh, oh well, that'll show up at some point. You would probably then said eight. Yeah, see that becomes the other problem. I go uh, 49, 50. 51. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Going. yeah. Great, great. I'm glad I could help. Yeah. All right, the nice 1862 off center. The thing that I that I found quite interesting about this was it's a 66. Wow. I said, wow, 66. I was going to break it out and send it back in. Hey, maybe it's a 67. And I said, oh, wait, that doesn't matter. So, all right, that's the cool thing about errors is if it's got eye appeal, that's usually good enough. You know, you're not going to get a lot more for a 66 over a 65 error, right? Because they're going to be different anyway. So, there you go. There's the back of that one. 63, triple strike. Ooh. Ooh. Now, there's some corrosion on the back, but you know what I said? If I just look at the front, I'll pretend it's not there. <laughs> that works fine for me. So in 1863, first one on center, <coughs> then one over here with 863, and part of the one, that's cool, and then another one, so triple strike. It's amazing so amazing that it spent that many years in circulation. Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like, was it being used as a pocket piece, or, or was somebody, you know, I'm just glad it doesn't have a hole in it, where, you know, they were... Wearing, um, yeah, but you see a lot of errors and you wonder, why would this be in circulation? I, I, think, it, I think that a lot of this tends to be pocket pieces. Uh, like a 1995 Silver Eagle, about good. Yeah. I mean, who ever heard of that in a pocket? It sold at auction for $500. Huh. Somebody oh. wanted that low grade for a well, yeah. registry set. For that, $500. For the PCGS yeah. set, yeah. I can make them all day. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a collection of old coins. Like, the, that's a really good investment. You know, it's not yeah, like you can't cheap. make they're another one. They're easy to move. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I can get some great stuff for not a lot of money. But then there's other guys that think that their old coins are really, really, really valuable. <laughs> can you fill in the hole, at least? All right, 1863 Broad Struck, another nice looking coin. So, just the collar wasn't there when it got. Struck, so it expanded. There you go. So one that I thought was pretty. And then nice off center. Well, where's that off center? How come that's okay? Well, yeah, there's a little bit of design missing down here. Okay, fine. But oh, by the way, off centers typically are a lot more expensive than broad strikes. So it, be it behooves you to get nice another MS66 coin. Yeah. All right, 64, copper nickel, double strike. One of my favorites. I got that from Fred Weinberg. When I, in, I guess it was about 86, 87, and I told him I was collecting Air Indian coins. He knew me, but not too well, but he sent uh, a whole group of them to my house. Little did we know that that was like torture. <laughs> for me, because the assumption when I was going to pick the ones I wanted and send the rest back, that didn't happen. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> that's what my wife had as her plan. But I said, you know, honey, really, that vacation, we just get sunburned. <laughs> I think we really need all of these. <laughs> and we're still married. So Whoa, so yeah. All right. That's right. She's very forgiving. Okay, reverse retained die break. Another one that's about to become a cut, but from here all the way down. You see how it's ripped through, and, and that whole part is about to fall off the, the die, the reverse die, and then it would be a blob because there would be no design to, to strike up. Then a reverse die cap, all right. Or like that other one that we showed. Nice high grade, another 66. It's hard to get these in not... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's something wrong with that coin. So then there's one that's called the counter brockage and broad strut. But you know what? It sure looks similar to that reverse die cap. So I was going to bring, you know, but this is from, from the PCGS guys. The other one's from NGC. 
because I was going to bring it to a. So do you grade all your error coins? I grade the error coins um, that have value of about $500 or more only because when I get hit by that bus, I don't want my wife to get screwed. <laughs> so they become a lot more liquid and easier to, to, for her. <coughs> She's probably just going to give it all the heritage. What she said was, what do you want me to do with your coins when you pass away? <laughs> and I said, surprise me. What's that with your jewelry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going to weigh it first, honey. And <laughs> How heavy is that casket? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Decorate the casket. There's over 150 coins in the collection. So if you happen to be an internet type person and want to go to NGC Coins, they have all of their registry sets. Now, of course, Errors is considered a custom set, so it's relegated to, you know, over there with all the weird stuff. The oddities, the phytos, as they're called. So, but if you go under N N NDC registry under custom sets, one of the categories in <coughs> errors, and if you go under Xano, you'll find Indian cent errors. And just to give you an idea of what we have here, this one is 1869 Indian head cent struck in nickel that they said was a pattern, but it's it's an R8, it's the only one that they know of. It sounds more like an error. And then some more nice high grade double stripes, 1904, but it's just got the little bit over there, but it's nice and pretty. This is a 1905, hard to see, but it's a flip over triple strike. And the first one's even off center a little bit. And just a nice high grade 1901 off center. This is another brockage, so the Indians looking the wrong way. Another double strike and another triple strike, plus another probably 120 coins in the errors that you'd be able to look at at your pleasure if you're really bored. <laughs> but I like them. So, 1905 up at the top. Any questions? Because that's the end of my presentation. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> statement, line the casket with them, and the archaeologists will go nuts. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't that be funny? Damn, you know, those people, those homo sapiens, they couldn't make anything right. <laughs> Weren't there quite a few struck on silver planches also? Yes, as a matter of fact. There were some that were done by mistake, and some that were done by the Midnight Minner. You know, that guy in 1900. I actually had one of his coins that had a 1900 Indian head scent struck, I think it was nine times, which you could tell by just the silver edges, off center on a dime planchet. Like, ta da! But I sold that one for 45 grand. The reason why I sold it was it, it wasn't real. It didn't fit. It didn't fit because I wanted ones that I truly thought were not assisted mint errors. Uh, how, how do you find these? Obviously, it's taken many years to find them. Yes, yeah, we're up to 32 years. Unfortunately, it's one of those things where I have to wait for someone to die. <laughs> and that's kind of sad. But this but last... Waiting for you to die, well, you? yeah, see, that's it. Now, you know, a few years ago, they didn't care. They said, ah, he's, he's, he's fine. Now they keep on sending me candy. And, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, 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 sausages. So, China. <laughs> it, it, uh, at the ANA this past week, there were actually 10 Indian head scent and flying eagle errors wow. in the heritage auction. I picked up six of those. And the uh, stacks auction had two in one lot. So I picked up that lot. And, uh, but that's usually it. When, that, when I look on eBay, unfortunately, a lot of folks think that they're worth a gazillion dollars, right? So it's hard because I have to give them the reality. Certain ones are really expensive. <clears throat> not all. Huh. I mean, well, everything's relative, but I mean, you know, <laughs> not all. <laughs> so, so I noticed in general, not just your 
presentation, but a lot of, uh, seems like predominantly error coins are slapped by NGC and a lot fewer in PCGS folders. Do you know why that is? I think it's if you're in, well, in my case, it is the current PCGS price is the normal price for any coin plus sixty dollars per error per error coin. So it's got to be a really valuable that's point. Way of saying they don't want to now, yeah, that's basically what they're saying. A whole bunch of them get done for uh, Heritage and those guys because they're contracts. When you can sign your collection, they will take hundreds, of, if not thousands, of coins and have them to be slapped at some much better than normal rate. So. Um, I assume that you think the gold Indian had cents were assisted. You know. No. The 1900s, yes. I mean, the 1900 one, yes. But I don't think the 1905 or the 1906 were uh, assisted. I think those could absolutely be. I mean, they could. They'd yeah. It's a quarter. It, it's, it's, it's the right size. It, it's, I believe those are real. I would love to get one of those. <laughs> the last one sold for 90 grand. And, Call me a cheap pastor. Yeah, that's, that's a cheap coin, too. Yeah, yeah. So they go up to a quarter million. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, this audience is, doesn't know you as well as I know, but you are considered one of the main roots of errors, and we should recognize you. You're up there with Fred Weinberg, Sid Cast, who's 96, the late uh, Alan Herbert, and uh, Lee Gong. And in 2005, we had all five of you together at the a, &A. He was there. And you were the only time all the Bay Roots gave were there to talk about errors. And that was one of the most attended programs. And I think the audience should know that about you, that you've been, you're nationally known for your errors with the time five big ones in the field. Well, it's now happening. Mike, the background on Zan. Thank you so much. Let's take one more question, then we'll wrap it up. Dave? Uh, is an overdate, is that considered an error or a variety? Variety if it's something on the die. Okay, I don't know if it's on the die. I don't <laughs> have the die. Yeah, well, I mean. Overdate, overdate, for example, an overdate. Right. Or a double die. Like if they got the it die. It looks like some of these are doubled also. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Most of, of those are considered it is varieties. And very early on, I said, my eyes are going to turn to crap quickly. Yeah. So, and being lazy, I wanted it to be something I could see with my naked eye. <laughs> well, you can clearly see the 186 uh, <coughs> is, is offset. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great day. Um, we all wonder what to do with our coins when we go. In fact, uh, Mike Trini and I, we still have a pending date for your program on that issue. But I, I'd like to mention, Sam, there's one more option for you. And your collection when you go. Yes. You know, it's just a <laughs> happen. My name is Chandler. Oh, really? I'm an orphan and I'm available for adoption. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you again, Sam. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Thank for your presentation. Right. We have an ANA speaker certificate. Great. And as usual, uh, in uh, going along with your program, uh, this has an error in it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> get a new one. I can feel it. Thank you very much. Uh, also, also, we do give our speakers that are not members of the club a fifty dollars speakers uh, honoraria. Yeah, so I know that. Yeah. No, Thank you. I yeah. donate that back. As a matter of no. fact, no, it's true. It's a charity. charity. Oh, choice. charity of my choice. That would be this coin club. Damn, right back to the coin club. In addition to that, um, through Mike, I've, I've been able to help support some of the other clubs in the Bay Area and the East Bay. And have you guys considered, um, I don't know if it's been brought up at the board level, have you discussed it all about having a mobile library? of coin books, something you could bring here for lending, etc. Because if you guys want to do that, I would like to support that idea of the first thousand dollars for me. 
and then we'll, we'll put it on our board meeting in September and talk about it. See what you want to do. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, man.